Schools in Kenya reopened today, starting with Grade 4, Class 8 and Form 4. The closure of schools in March this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic interrupted learning for over 17 million students who missed more than six months of formal education. Education Cabinet Secretary George Makoha, Makoha announced the reopening of schools last week, ending what had earlier been termed a dead year. Those expected to report on Monday are those in transitional classes, but the Kenyan government plans to eventually have everyone in school by the 2nd of November. Schools will be expected to put in place measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including checking temperatures and installing hand washing stations. Well, for more on this, uh, we cross now to our colleague, uh, our correspondent in Kenya, Sarah Kimani. Sarah, thanks very much for joining us. So, of course, uh, the Kenyan government had originally said that schools would be closed for the rest of 2020, but of course, uh, they've decided to backtrack on that and people are starting to go back to school. Yes, indeed, it's uh, 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 what parents are calling an ambush, but many of them are excited to have their children back to school. Uh, a lot of them now are at one of the schools where we are in Moy Girls Isinya, a secondary school just out of Nairobi, where uh, they're bringing in their uh, daughters. It's a girls' school only, so they're bringing in their daughters for registration, and they are hoping that this time they will be able to stay through to complete their national examinations. If I just step out, a bit of shot, you will be able to see them uh, there waiting to get it in, into the school. This time things are different. Uh, when they come accompanied by their parents, the parents would have taken them up to inside the school, but this time if you see, uh, they're all standing outside the gate. When they get here, uh, they wash their hands and then they have their temperatures checked and only then can they go back to clear their school fees and then the, pupil, the students only are allowed into the classroom. So totally different from uh, previously when they would be accompanied by their parents up to inside the dormitories. But this time the parents are now like strangers and they will be left outside. However, the pupils are excited, the students are excited to be back in school because this was their final year. So they will be sitting their form for examinations in preparation to join universities. Now, something you said earlier, Sarah, was uh, parents feel ambushed. I mean, how do parents feel? And are you seeing a lot of numbers in terms of the number of children who are returning back to school? Is there still a fear? Well, uh, they feel ambushed, not so much because of the COVID-19, because they have been going to work. Some of them have been going to work. They have been interacting in their places of work. But they feel ambushed because they had been told that our schools will only be reopened in January. And so some of them had either spent what was supposed to be their school fees. Some have lost their jobs or they have lost their little livelihoods that uh, they used to earn because uh, about 80 percent of Kenyans and they're living from small and medium enterprises. So a lot of them telling us that they're struggling to bring their children uh, back to school and having to pay their school fees. Remember, the school now must also ask for school fees because uh, there are more requirements. The school must buy sanitizers, they must uh, ensure that there is water throughout, they, might buy, they must buy soaps to put in the public hand washing stations, they must buy the thermogans. So things have really changed. And there's also the issue of uh, adding classrooms, dormitories uh, to allow for social distancing. So uh, the economic cost is high even for the schools and for the parents, they are beginning to feel it now. However, they say they are, they are satisfied with the COVID-19 protocols that they have seen in a school like this one. Then they say they are ready to bring their children back to school, if only for them to complete their education. Sarah, how bad have things been in the Kenyan economy in terms of job losses? Here in South Africa, we learned that we lost about 2.2 million jobs in the second quarter. Is it a similar number there or a very different type of impact? Well, uh, almost the same. We were told that at least 1.7 million people lost their jobs between March and June this year. Now, for the private school sector, it is even uh, worst hit because we were speaking two weeks ago to a person who owns a private school and they were saying, you know, we run these schools on loans and when our children are not in school, we have no collateral, so to speak, because the school fees is what is used to pay back these loans. So most of the private schools will actually be closed 
And so parents, again, will be forced to look for places in public primary schools, in public high schools, to take their children back to school. So it is a hit everywhere. About 1.7 million people who have direct employment have lost their jobs. Majority of those who are in their small and medium enterprises have lost their earnings because the purchasing power has been uh, really, really depleted in this country. But also, a lot of uh, the schools have been turned either into chicken coops. We did a story last week of, of vegetable farms or closed down completely because the wait was too long. It's been six months. But there is also something else that is coming out. Where we are is uh, predominantly a Maasai area. On, uh, the people who live here are from the Maasai community. Now, the Maasai community uh, do not take their girls to school, majority of them. And so these six months when the girls who had been going to school went back home, we understand a lot of them either fell pregnant, a lot of them uh, underwent the female genital mutilation or what we call female circumcision. So that is another hit. A lot of them, we understand, will not be coming back to school. So it's, it's been six months that will bring a lot of change in Kenya's education sector. And then, Sarah, lastly, you do indicate that there's going to be a phased-in approach to people going back to school. What can people expect? And in terms of the academic year, uh, when does it end? Well, uh, the, acad the academic year has been completely disrupted. We understand that now, once uh, uh, this, this, this particular classes seem to be working and uh, the methods that have been put in place seem to be working, the government plans to recall the next classes within the next two weeks. And by the 2nd of November, everybody should be in class. Now, the academic year uh, will run this particular term. We run up to the 23rd of December, just two days shy of Christmas. Then they will only have a two-week two break, and then they will reopen and run until March. So the national examinations, the equivalent of the matric in South Africa, would have been done between October and November. It will not be done in March. The government hopes that within two years it will be able to recover the academic calendar and uh, everything can go back to normal. So it will take two years for the academic calendar to be recovered. Sarah, thank you so much for those insights. My colleague there, Sarah Kimani, reporting from Kenya. It's